Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the kinetics of protein binding. Suppose the drug molecules are going to bind to this protein and here you can observe few of the proteins are uh, free and they are not bound with the drug. Now we can draw one of the kinetic equation for this protein drug interaction. A drug is going to interact with the protein such that they are going to form a protein drug complex and this rate of association can be given by the rate constant Ka. Similarly, the protein drug complex can be dissociated to again reconvert into a free drug as well as the free protein. Now here the drug is available as a free form as well as bound form. Similarly, the protein is also available as a occupied as well as unoccupied. What is the total protein concentration Pt is equal to P plus Pd or we have seen this equation. From this, we can derive what is the ratio of the drug bound to the total concentration of the protein. So R is equal to concentration of the drug bound by the total concentration of the protein. The concentration of the drug bound is nothing but Pd by total concentration of the protein is the Pt. So now this ratio is the Pd by Pt. Now we know the Pt is equal to P plus Pd. So now we can expand this equation. It is equal to Pd by P plus Pd. Simply it is the ratio of the protein which is interacting with the drug by the total concentration of the protein that is the protein which is in the free form as well as the occupied form. So this ratio gives the kinetics of the protein binding but here how we can get this PD value. The PD indicates whatever the protein which is occupied with the drug. This PD value can be obtained from the rate equation of the protein drug interaction. So all we have seen the drug is going to interact with the protein to give the protein drug complex which is given by the rate constant Ka and it can also undergo the reversible reaction. Now here the Ka is equal to the concentration of the products by the concentration of the reactants which is nothing but the Pd by D into P. Now from this we can get the Pd. If we rearrange this equation now the Pd is equal to Ka into P into D. Now let us substitute this value in the previous equation. So all we have seen that R is equal to Pd by P plus Pd. Now here let us replace this Pd with this equation. So R is equal to Ka into P into D by P plus Ka into P into D. Now here you can observe the concentration of the P is common at the numerator and denominator. So if we simplify this equation it becomes R is equal to Ka into D by 1 plus Ka into D. You can observe that this equation the ratio of the drug bound to the total protein concentration R is equal to K into D by 1 plus K into D where you can observe mainly the concentration of the drug. So this equation simply indicates that the rate of the protein binding depends on the concentration of the drug. But it is not that much simple. We have to see how the drugs are going to interact with the proteins. Now the drug molecules are present which are going to interact with the proteins but this protein may have the different binding sites. For example one of the drug molecule is going to bind to one side at the same time another drug molecule can bind to the other side. In this way one protein molecule may have different types of binding sites for a single drug molecule. So suppose if it is having the N binding site for a specific drug molecule then this equation R is equal to KAD by 1 plus KAD should be modified such that it should be multiplied with the letter N because N indicates the number of the binding sites for each protein. Till now we are thinking that one protein is binding with the one drug molecule but here one protein may interact with the N drug molecules. So we have to multiply with the N so it becomes N into KAD by 1 plus K into D. So this is the final equation we got from this protein drug interactions. And if we carefully observe and rearrange this equation, we can draw n the type of equation. Suppose we are going to divide the numerator and denominator with the letter Ka. Then what happens? Now, then it becomes n into d by 1 by Ka plus d. So where we have divided the numerator and denominator with the letter Ka. So this equation just resembles one of the well-known equation, michaelis menten equation. The michaelis menten equation describes the enzyme substrate kinetics where the velocity of the enzyme reaction V is equal to Vm into C by Km plus C. So this michaelis menten equation can also be applied for the protein drug interactions where the here term C is nothing but the concentration of the drug and what about the Vm? Vm is nothing but the N 
and k is nothing but the 1 by k so simply here this equation indicates the michaelis menten equation now let us see the protein binding kinetics and how we can explain the kinetics of the protein binding with the different types of equations and let us see which type of plots we can draw in order to identify the protein binding kinetics the first one is the direct plot this direct plot is obtained from this michaelis menten equation just already we have discussed and second one is the line weaver berg plot and third one is the hitchcock plot and fourth one is the scatchard plot so let us go one by one the first one is the direct plot previously we have derived one of the equation r is equal to n k a d by 1 plus k a into d so here what are the variables r is a variable r is a ratio of the drug bound to the total concentration of the protein which is variable and d the concentration of the drug is also variable now from this equation we can draw a plot so where the y axis is the r and x axis is the d the concentration of the drug so when we plot the r versus d which type of uh, plot we will get since it is not like a y plus uh, mx because here numerator is having the variable as well as denominator is having the variable it gives a non linear curve so we will observe a curve like this and here this curve can be split into three phases this is a first phase second phase and third phase this is just like the michaelis menten equation the first phase indicates the first order kinetics here as the drug concentration increases the protein drug binding increases by first order kinetics and at the second phase we can observe the mixed order kinetics because the proteins are capacity limited so as we are going to increase the drug concentration the protein drug binding is not parallelly increased and they can show the mixed order kinetics and third phase is the zero order at this phase even if we are going to increase the drug concentration the protein drug binding is not parallelly increased so it shows a only zero order kinetics where a plateau is going to be achieved in this way the direct plot shows the three types of phases the first order mixed order and zero order and protein binding shows the non linearity according to this equation so one of the disadvantages in this equation is the non linearity by which we cannot easily study the protein drug interactions so we can convert this direct plot into another plot where we can get a linear curve and we can easily understand the drug protein kinetics so second one is the line weaver berg plot this plot is obtained from this uh, direct plot so here we have already seen one of the equation for the direct plot r is equal to n k a d by 1 plus k a into d so let us modify this equation by taking the reciprocal equation by flipping this uh, equation so instead of the r we are going to take the 1 by r so numerator becomes denominator and denominator becomes numerator then 1 by r is equal to 1 plus k a into d by n into k a into d so just we have flipped the ratio now what happens if we simplify this it will becomes 1 by r is equal to 1 by n k a into d plus the second term will be 1 by n where the terms k a and d are going to be cancelled now this equation is a simple equation where 1 by r is equal to 1 by n k a d plus 1 by n by using this equation we can draw the plot but what are the variables here r is the variable as well as d is the variable but they are at the denominator not at the numerator so we can take the reciprocals so we can draw a plot such that y axis is the 1 by r and uh, x axis is the 1 by d so when we draw a plot with 1 by r versus 1 by d we will get a straight line but this straight line is not passing through the origin because it is having the y intercept and here what is the slope of this linear curve so here the slope is equal to given by 1 by n k a and similarly what about the y intercept y intercept is nothing but the 1 by n in this way the direct plot can be converted into line weaver berg plot where we are going to take the reciprocals of the variables in the direct plot we have taken the r versus d but here we have taken the 1 by r versus 1 by d because here we are going to take the reciprocals of the both of the variables this type of plot is also called as double reciprocal plot and this is also well known with the another name clodge plot 
in this way different names are there for the line weaver per plot so now this plot gives a straight line which is easy to study but still this plot is having one disadvantage what is that when we try to draw the data points here we can observe these data points are very nearer so we can observe a clustered data points within the plot which is not practical and we cannot draw the line in a easy way so this is one of the disadvantages of this line weaver bar plot which can be modified with the next type of the plot so third one is the hitchcock plot so already we have seen the line weaver bar equation 1 by r is equal to 1 by n k a d plus 1 by n since it is going to give the clustered data points let us multiply all the equation with one parameter which parameter is suitable so let us uh, multiply with the concentration of the drug then it becomes d by r is equal to when we multiply with the d the term d will be cancelled in the first part so it becomes 1 by n k a plus the second part will be d by n so this is the hitchcock plot and here what are the variables one of the variable is that d by r and second variable is the d so now we can draw a plot with y axis as d by r and x axis as d and when we draw this equation again we are getting a straight line which is not passing through the origin and here the slope is nothing but the 1 by n and the y intercept is nothing but the 1 by n k you can easily observe here the slope and y intercept are just reversed compared with the line weaver burke plot in the line weaver burke plot the slope is 1 by n k a but here the y intercept is the 1 by n k a similarly slope is also interchanged now here the data points are somewhat separated because we are going to multiply with the concentration of the drag so we can easily draw the linear curve here without any difficulty similarly we can observe the fourth type of plot is the scattered plot scattered plot can be obtained from the rearrangement of the first equation michaelis menten equation or direct equation where r is equal to n k a d by 1 plus k into d so let us rearrange this equation so if you are going to bring the denominator to the left side then it becomes r plus r into k a into d is equal to n k a d so simply we have cross multiplied then we can write r is equal to we can take the common of the term d so then it becomes n k a minus r k a into d then we can rearrange this further as r by d is equal to n k a minus r k a so here again what are the variables r by d is one of the variable and r is the another variable now from this equation we can draw a plot where the y axis is the r by d and x axis is the r but interestingly this plot gives a linear curve which is having the negative slope so the line will be like this now the slope of this line is nothing but the minus k a and the y intercept is nothing but the n k a so again this plot will not give any clustered points so we can easily study the protein drug interaction by using the scattered plot in this way the protein drug binding interactions can be studied by the four types of plots the direct plot which is nothing but the michaelis menten equation and second one is the line weaver burg plot which is also called as double reciprocal plot or clodge plot which gives a straight line but with clustered data points then third one is the hitchcock plot where where d by r versus d is going to be plotted to give a straight line and fourth one is a scattered plot where r by d versus r is going to be plotted to produce again a straight line with the negative slope the last two equations are more useful in order to study the protein drug interactions so that's for today if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video